Good evening. I'm Lisa Broom. In our top story at 7, nursing homes are under fire in Barbados following the viral video apparently showing a caregiver abusing an elderly patient. The latest to condemn the video is the Ministry of Health, which promises a crackdown on misconduct within elderly care institutions. In an interview with CBC this afternoon, the Ministry of Health maintained its position regarding the health aid in question. We have referred the matter to the General Nursing Council, which is responsible for the registration of these auxiliaries, and we are asking that there is immediate action to suspend her registration until a full investigation can be completed. The ministry is the regulatory body which guides and inspects the 64 or so nursing homes on the island. Most of the homes are good. However, I think that what happened here is a wake-up call to all nursing homes in Barbados. They need to get their act together. And while they work with homes to help them meet basic requirements, there's a penalty for those who don't make the grade. If necessary and you are not complying, we will invoke the penalties. Uh, which can go from a suspension to closing the nursing home altogether, removing the patient from the nursing home and closing it. The ministry wants people who know of abuse cases to send written complaints instead of one-off calls. But it says the public can still report it by calling 467-9500. Denise Blackman, CBC News. The chairman of the National Assistance Board, Reverend Dr. David Durant, wants cameras in every nursing home. He's also recommending thorough background checks on all staff employed at these institutions. Senator Durant believes this will help deal with the current cases of elder, elder abuse at private and public care facilities. He says authorities have to ensure nursing homes are properly monitored on a full-time basis. I've already suggested to this particular um, owner, proprietor of this nursing home. When I went there yesterday, I told her you need cameras installed in here, operating on a 24-7 basis. And I want to uh, ask, I want to, I'm going to suggest as well to the government, and I hope this is something that can be legislated, where every, is mandatory that every nursing home, both private and even government nursing homes, um, we have cameras installed on a 24-7 basis. The Barbados Nurses Association is also tonight weighing in on the development. It says the woman seen allegedly abusing an elderly woman in a video circulating on social media is not a registered nurse. Association President Blondell Mullins says the female is a hired nursing auxiliary, often referred to as a help aid. The nurse's profession has come in for some bad press following the circulation of the video. There are persons or caregivers who are trained for six months, and in that six months they will do, say, a basic first aid course. They are just supposed to assist the registered nurse with the care of the clients. Most nursing homes have um, caregivers rather than nurses. There are a, one of the regulations of the Ministry of Health that they should have a registered nurse who is a staff nurse who was trained for three years to oversee the care at the nursing home. So that person should be there to oversee the other caregivers giving the care. But I guess because of finances or whatever, most of the nurses home do not have a registered nurse. Ms. Mullins says help aides, unlike nurses, are not trained to give nursing care in times of emergencies. She notes that over time, more people have entered the profession of elder care as younger Barbadians seek employment. While police are reporting significant progress in the elder abuse case involving the nursing auxiliary at the Christchurch Nursing Home. Police Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch says a woman is now in custody assisting lawmen with their investigations. CBC News understands that charges are expected to be laid soon. The abuse case was first highlighted on Monday after the video went viral on social media. In other news now, a recall has been issued on Quaker Oats Quinoa Granola Bars. The Department of Commerce today issued a statement concerning the recall of the products. It says the department is working with importers and distributors to determine whether these items have been imported into Barbados. It is important to note that there have been no reports of illness associated with these products to date. 
Among the products recalled are the 6.1 ounce boxes of Quaker Quinoa Granola Bars Chocolate Nut Medley. The items have best before dates of October 16th and 17th this year. The 6.1 ounce boxes of Quaker Quinoa Granola Bars Yogurt, Fruit and Nut are also subject to the recall and have best before dates of October 10th and 11th this year. Now, people who traveled and bought Quaker quinoa granola bars overseas for their personal use should also check to confirm that they do not have any of the recalled products. Two men have been charged for breaking into and stealing from several churches, and two other people have been charged for handling at least one of the items which they took. 28-year-old Jamal Shane Quinton, who is homeless, and 32-year-old Wayne Harold McCarthy of Seclusion Road, Black Rock, allegedly broke into St. Augustine Anglican Church in St. George. They are also accused of breaking into several other churches throughout St. Philip, St. Michael and St. Thomas in a spree which ran from last year and ended only last month. They have been jointly charged with three counts of sacrilege, while Quinton was charged with an additional count of sacrilege. And as a result, 52-year-old Patricia Ann Grant and 53-year-old Jeffrey Adolphus Odell, both of Grisette's New Road St. Michael, have each been charged with handling stolen property. They allegedly received an item which was stolen from one of the churches. Two of the four have been remanded to prison. And this just in, the National Union of Public Workers is demanding a 23% salary increase for public sector workers. That works out to be 18% from 2010 to 2013 and a further 5% from 2013 to 2015. This was revealed following a meeting of public servants at the union's headquarters this evening. The news follows recent contentious debate over the restoration of 10% of salaries of parliamentarians. The NUPW's Acting General Secretary, Delcia Burke, says the public is frustrated with the proposed restoration of the 10%. Ms. Burke says to do so would be unfair to workers. For all workers, you would have had um, their, their allowances on, the allowances would have been tapped. You would have received an increase in land tax, in road tax, excise tax, utility bills would have gone up. There would have been an introduction of consolidated tax and municipal solid waste tax, which was just recently um, stopped, but which would have been in operation during the time that we submitted the proposals for. Well, Barbadians should not be misled by the proposed March for Justice to be staged tomorrow by the opposition Barbados Labour Party. This word of caution from General Secretary of the Democratic Labour Party, George Pilgrim. He's suggesting people see it for what it is, a fear-mongering political tactic to create chaos and confusion under the guise of walking for justice. Mr. Pilgrim tells CBC News such, that such disruptions cannot be described in any form as caring. The idea of a march within this context can only be interpreted as power-wielding strategy aimed not at creating awareness of any particular flaw in the economic recovery agenda of Barbados, but the engagement of part of a lengthy political agenda that is to unfold over the next 19 months. We generally hope that Barbadians will also view with suspicion the intentions of the premeditated march, which forms part of a wider political operation fueled by a power-thirsty group within the opposition. Mr. Pilgrim says from the recent spate of events, there appears to be a desperate surge by the opposition to seize power. He anticipates more political gimmicks from the opposition as the country moves closer to elections. I am predicting that over the next 19 months, this country will witness a convergence of activities under the banner of justice, which carries a potent political message, which will produce nothing but fear and noise among a people destined for great things. In the face of this premeditated activity, I ask all Barbadians to reflect, reclaim, and retain what has made us and continue to define us during our 50 years of celebration, our pride and industry. Coming up, we'll tell you what new mission the Barbados Road Safety Association is on. Stay with us.
Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. If you're looking to add a stylish and elegant touch to your home decor, then look no further than Furniture Village with their classic Rooms to Go collection, the Woodhouse collection and more, along with decorative pieces and soft furnishings for the right touch. Get style, get value with Furniture Village. It's not about exercising. It's having the strength to do what you're passionate about. It's not about the road traveled. It's about the one to be traveled. An important thing in life is finding the perfect balance between body and soul. With a bottle of Ensure, you get the proteins, calcium, and 26 vitamins and minerals your body needs to live the best moments of your life with strength and energy. Your life, your health, your Ensure. The Barbados Road Safety Association is on a mission to protect the traveling public, both motorists and pedestrians. And to ensure their safety, the BRSA wants a number of issues addressed. We hear more in this report from Kishmar Sinjist. Among the areas of concern identified by the Barbados Road Safety Association, this section of the ABC Highway is referred to as the Bermuda Triangle and was the recent scene of a serious accident. The Road Safety Association took a CBC team to the location to see firsthand just why they are concerned. At issue, the state of this barrier which the Road Safety Association wants replaced. It poses a danger, you know, where it is located. Don't let this last damage or extended damage to this location, you know, go on like how the one before. BRCA member Carson Lee says what's left of the barrier poses an additional hazard. Let's say you had a motorcycle, came down here and lose control. You can imagine what the damage would be to him because he's, a, he's vulnerable. He doesn't have a shell around him. So these are the concerns I have about this particular structure. Public relations officer Richard Cox is telling motorists there is no need to speed. If it's one thing that I'm sure of is that as soon as it is fixed, it may not run again. I can assure you that if you judge the speeds of vehicle passing here, some drivers are doing up to 100, mile, 100 kilometers an hour. The BRICL also wants to see an improvement in the state of some pedestrian crossings. President Charmin Roland Boyne says several of them need repainting. The BRSC is calling on businesses to join it as it embarks on its crosswalk improvement project. What the project speaks to, it encourages um, businesses across Barbados to, to give back something to their community, the community where they um, work, where they live and so on, and help sponsor on the upkeep of these pedestrian crossings by having installed a most conspicuous sign type sign, a fluorescent green sign, that's what the one that we are looking at, and the painting of these and maintenance of these crosswalks. This junction that links Crumpton Street and Constitutional Road in historic Bridgetown is one which the Road Safety Association says motorists complain about. And Mrs. Roland Boyne is offering this suggestion. As you can see, seeing the um, close proximity to the traffic and to the um, pedestrian crossing, if they can probably move it a little further down, further away from the gate itself, and put it a little further down, um, closer to the, the, the junction, as per se, that would give a little leeway, a little um, longer time for the drivers to spot the pedestrian, you know, and be able to react to, to them as well. Remember, Barbados, safety before convenience. Kishmar Sanjis, CBC News. 
A new artist management company has been formed and head of the Cultural Industries Development Authority, Andrea King, says it's just what the sector needs. Ms. King delivered the feature address at the official launch of Star Quality Entertainment over the weekend. She told the team what they're doing for cultural industries is crucial. It is the intermediaries like you who are necessary to help the cultural industries become a sustainable sector. Very often we hear about artists, we hear about talented writers, songwriters, singers, um, actors, comedians. And very often they do not have a team around them who can help them do the management. Star Quality was officially formed last year and has six individual artists and a band on its roster. Among them, the hugely popular Stiffy, who has several local and regional performances under his belt. Managing Director Julian Arthur says there are a number of projects in the pipeline for the company. This year and going forward, we intend to take Star Quality Band beyond the local shores by tapping into the regional and entertain, uh, international entertaining and musical markets. The focus of Star Quality is not only on the entertainment landscape of the island, but part of our mandate is community outreach. The expansion of sand to births in the Carinage is proving to be a major headache for local cruising businesses, and the Barbados Port Inc. has stepped in to resolve the issue. Harbour Master at the Barbados Port, Richard Allen, says the sand has been expanding for years. However, it is reaching the births of the Carinage affecting a number of cruising businesses such as jamming cruises. It will mainly have been the, the, the boating businesses in the immediate um, proximity jamming. We had to actually move a, a vessel from in front there and allow jamming to, to move their vessel forward. Um, we have had um, a number of complaints from the um, Black Pearl where they have actually complained of actually having touched um, run around slightly as they were coming in. So it really became a, a problem and we could see that if it continued that it would eventually probably pose a serious danger to navigation. To tackle the problem, the port is adopting a two-pronged approach. The first is to start a dredging project to remove the sand. Mr. Allen says the dredge, which costs an estimated $1 million, will remove the sand and place it in a retention pond. The process that will be used to remove the sand basically would be uh, you use a dredge and it's basically going to suck the sand from there and it will suck it like right around the revetment area and the sand will then be placed in what is called a retention pond where it will be drained and then we will move it then to a, a storage site. He gave the assurance that the construction will not have an impact on neighboring businesses or workers. Above the water level, we don't expect to really have any environmental impacts. And in terms of the under the water, when you start to disturb the, the marine environment like that, you get what is, can be called a plume, where you have, you know, like a, a, a sort of a cloudy thing. So there's going to be um, a, what we call a turbidity barrier that we'll place around it to try to stop that plume. Now the second phase of the project will involve the building of a structure to stop the sand from reaching the berth. Ryan Broom, CBC News. Still to come, a suggestion from Jamaica's Prime Minister on what's needed to solve poverty and other social problems. Stay with us. <laughs> 